So in this video, what we'll check out will be how to adjust some settings on the calculator so that what you have is a complete picture of whatever it is that you're trying to graph. And so if you look, this is a little set of problems from a calculus textbook, and the problems just want us to use a standard window initially, uh, realize that we don't see all the important details of the graph. Uh, the important details of a graph would be x-intercepts, y-intercepts, maxes, mins, asymptotes. So we're just going to want to make sure we see all the important pieces of a graph before we are satisfied with the picture the calculator is showing us. Uh, we're going to have to try to adjust the graphing window to find the missing details. Um, for those of you that are familiar graphing with the calculators, I'm assuming that you realize we're going to graph with the y equals menu. And so what I already have typed in here is I already have this function typed in. And so if we graph on the standard viewing window, and if, if you don't have a standard viewing window, what you can use is you can use this zoom standard feature uh, to show you a picture that goes from negative 10 to positive 10 in the x direction and from negative 10 to positive 10 in the y direction. Now if you look at this particular graph, uh, it, it seems like it's a pretty decent graph. You know, we see where the graph crosses the y-axis. We see an x-intercept here. Uh, the only thing that we really have to kind of worry about is whether or not there are any other x-intercepts over here to the left where we can't currently see or over here to the right where we can't currently see. And so what I'm going to do just to kind of get a feel for whether or not we're going to have to make any adjustments here is I'm not going to use this option. I, I definitely would suggest that you try to avoid the zoom in or the zoom out is what we would need here to, to go backwards to see more of the graph. I would try to avoid using these only because you're, you're kind of at the calculator's mercy depending on what type of function you've graphed as to what exactly the calculator is going to do uh, when you use those features. So what I would suggest doing is I would suggest going into the table so to get into the table, you're just going to hit second, and then the graph button right above it in yellow says table. And this is the standard table that you'd graph with. And so what this will allow you to see is that if you progress uh, to the right with your x values, and I know I'm going down in the table here, but this would be working you know, across the x-axis. As I look at these values, what I see is I see you know, negative values for y between the x's of, you know, Let's see, what was the first x that gave us a negative? I guess 0 is the first x that gave us a negative y value. So I see negative y values between the x values of 0 and 10. But then I see on the other side of 10, I see a, a positive y value. So let's think about what that must mean. On this graph, you know, the graph is obviously getting really, really negative as I go down here. But then as I go off the right edge of what we can currently see, the graph is actually going to come back and cross the x-axis somewhere in here to get to a positive value for y when x is 11. So I'm going to go into my window menu and I know that if I change x max to something like 15 that'll let me see a little bit further to the right. And so if I re-graph, yeah look we have another zero there. So that's definitely something that we would have expected to to see based on what we saw in that table from a minute ago. So what I would definitely suggest doing is not using zoom in and zoom out, not just randomly going into this menu and changing a bunch of things all at once and hope to get lucky. I would look at the table. We looked at the table, recognized that we were going to have to see over past 10 in the x direction, change that one setting in the window menu like we did, changed it to a 15, re-graph and say, okay, well, now I, I guess in order for my graph to be way down here and then get back through this point and be up above the x-axis from that point forward, I'm going to have to have another minimum. My graph's going to have to bottom out somewhere down in here. So I'm going to have to see further down to see where that minimum is. Uh, what are you going to do to change that? Well, to see further down, y minimum will let you see further down, but what do you want to change it to? Now you can change it to negative 100, you can change it to negative 1000, you can do this by guessing, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to double check that table. I see negative values that get clear down to, you know, negative 1500 almost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my y min to something like negative uh, 1600 and hopefully that will let me see where the graph bottoms out. Now I don't really have as nice a picture up here anymore, but you know this minimum point right here would have been one of the important details of this graph. 
uh, just so that we see a little bit more of the graph since this looks kind of distorted because we're seeing so far down and not really far up or that far to the left or right compared to how far down we're looking. I'm going to change my Y max to mm, something like a thousand. Whoops. And I'm not being very successful with that. There we go. And if I regraph, you know, there's a there's a nice little picture. So we have, you know, an X intercept here. The Y intercept was just below the origin. We have our other local minimum and we have our other X intercept. So there's a pretty nice picture. If you're worried about the fact that the Y axis looks kind of goofy here, the other thing that you could change uh, in the window is you could change the scaling on your Y axis. I have Y being scaled by one. If I change Y scale to uh, 100, that will put rather than having a tick mark every one unit on the y-axis, we'll have a tick mark every 100 units. And we have a, a nicer picture. So being able to graph things on the calculator and then manipulate the window in a way that makes sense, in a smart way, knowing where you're going to have to see and then just changing one thing at a time until you get a picture like this, in my opinion, is what makes the most sense uh, when you're dealing with a problem like we are right now. We'll take a look at one more of these. So I'm going to get this graph shut off, and I guess I'm done with that graph, so I'm just going to clear it at this point. And I'm going to turn this second graph on. So if we wanted to do the same thing with this new function, uh, and we wanted to start with the standard picture, we could do a zoom standard, and that'll take us to the picture where we see negative 10 to positive 10, both directions. Uh, it seems like we might need to see a little further up to see where this local maximum is. We see a local minimum here. You know, maybe the graph is going to do something like what we saw before. Maybe we have another maximum up here, and then we cross the x-axis over here somewhere where we can't currently see. Maybe we come way down over here and then cross the x-axis again over here where we can't currently see. I'm not going to guess at this. I'm going to go into my table to figure this out. I like when my table starts at zero. So you notice I hit this table setting button here, uh, or table setup button. So I'm going to start my table at zero. I'm going to have the jump be one. And I'm just going to go and check out my table at this point. And so I see some positive Y values. Do the Y values ever start to decrease again? No, it looks like as X gets bigger, the Y values are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it doesn't seem like the graph is going to ever you know, top out over here and then come back down uh, across the X axis. But if we go the other direction, let's see. So negative Y more and more and more and more and more negative y's. You know, this is scientific notation. So this is negative 3.6 times 10 to the fifth. So I guess, uh, although we had to kind of consider whether or not we had a complete view of this graph, uh, this is a pretty complete graph. The only exception might be not being able to see that maximum. So if we went ahead and just changed our y max to something like, you know, 25, doesn't seem like we have to see that much further up there. You know, there's the local max, there's the local min. Y intercept is visible, all of the X intercepts are visible. There's a graph of this function. Hopefully that helps. I think looking at the table and then changing one thing at a time in the window menu is definitely the smartest way to change the picture that you see on your calculator screen.